Hello there, um, I'm Black Bright, woman of many faces, or should I say many hairstyles. I've been like this from I've known myself since at school. I've always changed my hair. So you're probably saying, I wonder what she's going to look like today, or I wonder if that's the same woman. Anyway, for those of you who are subscribers, you'll know I'm one of the same. I'm Black Bright, and I talk about a variety of subjects. So I just want to thank you once again for allowing me into your homes, into your space, and into your territory. Um, today, I wanted to talk about the Haitians and the um, UN, not the UN, the US naval ship that is now in Haiti. Um, actually, I think it leaves today. Today's the 11th, but it's been there since the 4th. But first of all, I really want to raise, um, bring to the forefront how badly they've been treated by the Bahamians. So I hear um after hurricane dorian 61 people died that's the official figures but they they know that there's more than them and yet they're being terrorized and they're being deported by the hundreds and it's not like they're being deported in um, the main towns they're being deported in remote regions and so they're really really vulnerable i don't know what's being done um, they're already a kind of, the country's already having um, demonstrations about high inflation rates and, you know, not having enough supplies. And they're really having a hard time. And so it's a bit of a shame that because they're home, especially by Hurricane Dorian, it's like they've had a double whammy. Um, hurricane, they live on a place called Abaco Islands, where the majority of Haitians, that's where they live. Apparently, many of them are illegal. Some of them are married to Bahamians. Some of them are born, um, let me see. Apparently, according to Haitian immigration, if even if you're born in another country, so even if you're born in the Bahamas, you are still a Haitian according to their immigration law. So Haitians that are born in the Bahamas, well, they, well, I have to say Haitians that are born in Bahamas because their parents are Haitian. They can't get their immigration status because they're not considered as Bahamians. The, uh, if you're married to Bahamian, then you're allowed to stay. And some of them were fortunate enough to have um, to be married to Bahamians and they were allowed to stay but what the Bahamian um, immigration force is apparently doing is rounding them up off of the streets throwing them into buses and sending them off to the deportation center if they don't have their documentation my thing is is that even the legal um, Haitians who have who lost their documentation they were working, lost their documentation in the hurricane, are being told to leave the Bahamas and um, reapply from Haiti. And I don't understand how, after such a terrible hurricane, how they're expected to have documentation, how they know who's legal from who's not legal, and how it works. I mean, we heard that the Bahamians feel that it was actually the Haitians using witchcraft to cause the um, hurricane. But why would they use witchcraft to cause a hurricane and then damage where they're living? A lot of them are living in shanty towns. A lot of them have low paid jobs. A lot of them are, you know, helpers doing their, you know, doing their laundry, gardening and stuff like that. So why would they do that? But regardless, apparently they discriminate against the Haitians anyway. So coming back to the U.S. Navy ship, that is now, well, it has been docked in Haiti. It's the last round. They went to five, you know, five areas. So Haiti is the last stop. <clears throat> and apparently it's been to Haiti six times in the last 10 years. So Haiti is the last stop. Uh, apparently there's a man he came from, but the queues are so long, over 100 people waiting in line to get treatment. One guy left, took a six hour drive to come and, because he's got prostate cancer. And he came he came all that way and couldn't be seen because the queue was long. And he did it twice, six hours. And he's saying it cost him so much money. So um, 
So a lot of them, you know, with diabetes, I think somebody has been treated. But the U.S. Navy reckon there's 600 is it 600 or 900 personnel on that ship? 900 personnel on that U.S. Navy ship. From um, specialists, volunteers, from NGOs. And I'm trying, why? I, you know, I keep having to ask myself, why? I mean, it's good for those who are getting the treatment. And it's good for those, you know, I don't know how many people were seen. But, uh, you know, over, when you think about hundreds have been lining up to for the days, for the whole, I think is that they, I think they've been in Haiti longer than they've been at anywhere else. I think the others, like Grenada and um, St. Lucia and Jamaica, that was just three days. But for Haiti, they've been there from the 4th to the 11th, which is um, just over a week. But anyway, regardless of that, so all I'm saying is that um, there are people, they've got bullet wounds apparently, diabetes, and they're all just wait, they all have been waiting to be seen by the ship. So anyway, um, put two and two together and come up with five, I, I really don't know. I don't understand the bias in the Bahamas against, you know, people of your own colour. And then conversely, you have the opposite, where you've got the US Navy, ironically, and they are trying to help. So we don't know what's going on. I have no idea. There, There's obviously something why they're going around to these Caribbean countries and Latin American countries and offer them free health care. But I don't know what what's behind it so we just have to take it with open hands for now for those who've been treated they won't even care what the price is to pay they won't care if what happens because at least if it's eased their kind of distress it's been a cause well received so that's all i've really got to say for now and bye-bye